So let's talk about Tesla's full self-driving. It's gotten incredibly good at so many things, navigating chaotic city streets, handling four-way stops with a human-like touch. But there's always been this one scenario, this one specific challenge that has consistently felt like FSD's Achilles heel. I'm talking about railroad crossings. For years, these simple, yet potentially catastrophic, intersections have been a source of anxiety for FSD users. Are they still FSD's biggest weak spot? That's the question we're diving into today, because with the release of full self-driving version 14, Tesla claims to have made some major leaps forward. This isn't just another incremental update. It's a significant architectural change that promises to improve perception and decision-making across the board. Railroad crossings represent a unique and critical safety challenge for any autonomous system. Unlike a typical intersection, the stakes are astronomically higher. A mistake here isn't just a fender bender, it can be a life or death situation involving a multi-ton train that cannot stop quickly. The system has to correctly identify the crossing. Whether a train is approaching if the gates are down, if the lights are flashing, and then execute a safe maneuver. It sounds simple on paper but in the real world, crossings come in all shapes and sizes. To really appreciate the changes in version 14, you have to understand where FSD is coming from. Its history with railroad crossings has been, to put it mildly, a bit rocky. For many early adopters and testers, approaching a set of tracks was a moment to hover your hands over the wheel and your foot over the brake. The issues weren't just one thing, they were a collection of inconsistent and often unnerving behaviors. It was this unpredictability that made these encounters so stressful. You never quite knew which version of FSD you were going to get. The overly cautious one, the strangely oblivious one, the one that just seemed completely confused. In earlier versions, like FSD beta versions 9 and 10, a common complaint was the phantom braking phenomenon. The car would be driving perfectly fine, identify a railroad crossing far in the distance, and then suddenly and aggressively slow down for no apparent reason. Frustrating drivers and creating a potential hazard for traffic behind. On the flip side, there were documented instances where the software seemed almost too confident. Some users reported their cars attempting to navigate around lowered crossing gates treating them like a temporary construction barrier rather than an absolute stop command. These weren't isolated incidents. They were patterns of behavior that pointed to a fundamental gap in the AI's understanding. Then came versions 11 and 12, which moved to the single-stack architecture, promising a more unified and intelligent approach. There were definite improvements. The system became better at recognizing the tracks and the associated signage. However, Hesitation was still the name of the game. It was as if it was caught in a decision loop, unable to commit to either stopping or proceeding safely. These past struggles all boil down to one core issue, perception versus comprehension. So, what exactly makes FSD version 14 different? According to Tesla, this isn't just a minor patch, it's a foundational upgrade. The headline feature is what they're calling a 10x model parameter leap. In simpler terms, the neural network that powers the car's brain has become vastly more complex and powerful. Think of it like upgrading from a standard definition video to an 8K one. The system can now process a much higher fidelity picture of the world, allowing it to see more nuance and detail in its environment. This upgrade is specifically designed to improve the car's ability to handle complex scenarios and, you guessed it, those tricky edge cases like railroad crossings. A key part of this upgrade is a more sophisticated perception system. With version 14, the car isn't just identifying objects, it's trying to understand their intent and their relationship to each other. It's now running on a model trained to understand the concept of a railroad crossing as a special type of intersection with unique rules. This means it can better anticipate what might happen next. For example, it can associate flashing red lights with the imminent arrival of a train and the lowering of gates allowing it to make a decision to stop earlier and more smoothly, rather than reacting at the last second. Another major focus for version 14 has been safety and redundancy. The software now performs more cross-checks between its various sensory inputs. It doesn't just rely on the cameras. It's designed to better integrate data to confirm what it's seeing. If the vision system detects flashing lights, the software is now better at looking for corroborating evidence, like the position of a crossing gate or even the vibrations that might indicate an approaching train, though that last part is more speculative. This multi-layered approach is crucial for high-stakes situations. It builds in a margin of safety, reducing the chance that a single point of failure 
like a camera blinded by sun glare, could lead to a catastrophic mistake at a crossing. Finally, this update is deeply tied to Tesla's newer hardware, specifically Hardware 4. The higher resolution cameras of Hardware 4 provide cleaner data, and the more powerful FSD computer can run the larger, more complex version 14 neural network without lag. This synergy is what enables the more refined behaviors we're supposed to be seeing on the road, creating a system that is theoretically faster, smarter, and safer when faced with the critical decision of whether to stop or go at a railroad crossing. Alright, for the first real-world test I took the Model S Plaid running FSD version 14 to a standard guarded crossing in a suburban area. This one has everything you'd expect. Flashing lights, audible bells, two gates that block the road. In the past, these setups could trip up FSD. It might stop too far back or get hesitant after the train passed, waiting an awkwardly long time to proceed. Approaching the crossing, the car was at the speed limit, about 35 miles per hour. The dashboard visualization was noticeably more detailed than Vibor 13. It rendered the tracks, the overhead light structure, and the individual gates. About 200 feet out, the lights flashed and the bells rang. FSD responded instantly, but not abruptly. Instead of slamming the brakes, it did a smooth, progressive deceleration. It stopped about 15 feet from the gate, a safe, natural distance. A long freight train passed. It took over a minute to clear the intersection. The car sat perfectly still the entire time. No creep, no hesitation, no phantom jitters. The visualization stayed locked on, showing the train as a long, moving object. Once the last car cleared, the gates began to rise. Older versions sometimes stumbled here. With version 14 it was different. At about halfway up, when the gates were clearly out of the path, the car began to creep forward. It was confident and calculated. It checked the path then accelerated smoothly across the tracks, back up to the speed limit with no awkward pauses. The whole maneuver felt completely natural, from slowdown to acceleration. For this basic test, FSD V14 didn't just pass, it earned an A+. It showed polish that wasn't there before. After acing the standard guarded crossing it was time to raise the stakes. I drove out to a much more challenging scenario. A classic unguarded rural crossing. This kind of spot tests an AI's situational awareness. No gates. No flashing lights. No bells. A single weathered crossbuck sign. A stop sign just before the tracks. Two-lane country road. Trees blocking visibility. A slight curve. For a human driver, full stop, a careful look both ways, then proceeding with caution. This is where older FSD versions struggled, approaching at 45 miles per hour. FSD V14 identified the stop sign. Visualization rendered the crossbuck. Visualization rendered the tracks on the road surface. The car stopped at the painted stop line. Then the real test. In previous versions the hesitation would begin, the car would often sit for a long time, or creep forward then stop again. This time behavior was more human-like. After stopping the car paused about 3 seconds. Then it initiated a very slow deliberate creep forward. It moved a few feet to improve line of sight past the trees. It nudged its nose out so cameras could see down the tracks. Visualization showed an arrow pointing left. Visualization showed an arrow pointing right. It held position for 4 to 5 seconds performing its safety check. Once clear the system made a decisive move. No second guessing. The car accelerated across the single track and continued on its way. The process felt safe, logical, and methodical. It correctly obeyed the stop sign. It recognized the need for an extra visual check. It executed the creep and scan maneuver flawlessly. This was a massive improvement. V14 isn't just following simple rules, it's doing dynamic risk assessment. It handled a genuinely tricky situation with impressive nuance. Now for the final boss of railroad crossings. This is a scenario I've used to benchmark FSD for years because it throws everything at the system at once. It's a complex, multi-track crossing in a dense urban area. There are three separate sets of tracks used by freight trains and passenger trains, all within about 100 feet of each other. It's located right after a busy intersection with a traffic light, and one set of tracks is on a slight angle to the road. There are gates and lights, other cars, pedestrians, confusing lane markings, has historically been a nightmare for FSD. Our test started with us stopped at the red light just before the first set of tracks. 
When the light turned green, version 14 had to make a quick decision. In the past, FSD would sometimes get confused here, inching forward then stopping abruptly, as it tried to process the traffic light and the upcoming tracks simultaneously. This time, it handled it smoothly. It recognized the green light, saw the tracks were clear, and proceeded forward at a cautious but steady pace. It successfully navigated the first set of tracks without any issue, then prepared to cross the next two, which were located right after one another. As we approached the second set, the warning lights for that crossing activated, and the gates began to lower. FSD responded perfectly, bringing the car to a smooth stop a safe distance from the descending gate. A passenger train quickly passed. After the train cleared and the gates went up, the system didn't just gun it. It recognized that there was still a third set of tracks immediately ahead. It proceeded cautiously, scanning the third track before accelerating. This is a critical detail. It didn't treat the all-clear from the second crossing as an all-clear for the entire zone. It assessed each track as its own potential hazard. However, it wasn't a completely perfect run. After clearing the final track and accelerating, the system seemed to momentarily get confused by a faded lane line on the pavement right after the crossing. It performed a very slight but noticeable steering wobble for about two seconds before correcting itself and centering perfectly in the lane. It wasn't dangerous, but it was a small crack in an otherwise flawless performance. It suggests that while the logic for handling the crossings themselves has improved dramatically, integrating that behavior back into the normal driving task in a complex environment can still have a few rough edges. So let's break down the actual tangible differences between FSD version 13 and version 14 for railroad crossings. The most immediate change is the reduction in unnecessary hesitation. Version 13, hesitation score, 8. It would frequently pause for 10 to 15 seconds, sometimes longer, creating awkward and unpredictable situations. Version 14, hesitation score, 2. The pause is now a deliberate 3 to 5 second safety check followed by a confident action. It feels intentional rather than uncertain. Another major point, smoothness of deceleration and acceleration. Version 13 often felt robotic. It would sometimes apply the brakes more abruptly than necessary, leading to a jerky stop. Its acceleration after clearing the tracks was similarly binary. Version 14 is a world apart. The braking is progressive and smooth, mimicking a human driver anticipating a stop. The acceleration is equally measured, especially in complex situations like the multi-track crossing, where it proceeded with caution before fully accelerating. The on-screen visualizations also tell a big part of the story. In version 13, the rendering of a railroad crossing was often generic. Version 14's visualizations are noticeably richer and more accurate. At the guarded crossing, it rendered the entire structure, including the posts holding the lights. At the multi-track crossing, it correctly displayed all three sets of tracks as distinct from one another. This isn't just for show. It reflects a deeper understanding of the environment. However, the comparison also highlights where work still needs to be done. That slight steering wobble I experienced with version 14 after the complex crossing is a key data point. While version 13 might have gotten stuck or made a more serious error at the crossing itself, its lane keeping on straight roads was generally very solid. This small issue in version 14 suggests that as Tesla rewrites major parts of the code for specific scenarios, ensuring seamless integration with the core driving functions is a continuous challenge. Version 14 is undeniably a massive leap forward in handling the crossing itself, but it reminds us that the software is a complex web where fixing one thing can sometimes reveal new, smaller issues elsewhere. So, what do all these improvements actually mean for the average Tesla owner? The most immediate impact is a significant reduction in driver anxiety and the need for interventions. For drivers who frequently encounter railroad crossings on their daily commute, this update transforms the experience. What was once a recurring moment of tension, wondering if you'd need to take over, now becomes a much more reliable and trustworthy event. The system's newfound confidence and smoothness mean fewer disengagements and a more pleasant, less stressful drive. It's a tangible quality of life improvement that makes the full self-driving promise feel a little bit closer to reality. However, it's crucial to frame this progress correctly. The system is still designated as FSD supervised, and for good reason. My tests, while overwhelmingly positive, 
did include that one minor wobble. While it was harmless in my case, it serves as a stark reminder that the system is not infallible. For Tesla owners this means that the core responsibility hasn't changed. You are still the captain of the ship. The improvements in version 14 should build confidence but not complacency. Drivers must continue to treat FSD as a highly advanced driver assist feature, not a fully autonomous chauffeur. Hands on the wheel and eyes on the road rule is as important as ever. From a regulatory perspective, this update is a double-edged sword. On one hand, Tesla is demonstrating clear, measurable progress on a critical safety issue that has been a point of concern for agencies like the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Proactively identifying and fixing weaknesses in the system is exactly what regulators want to see from manufacturers. This kind of targeted improvement strengthens the case that Tesla's iterative, data-driven approach can lead to a safer product over time. It provides positive data points that can be used to inform future autonomous vehicle regulations and future autonomous vehicle standards. On the other hand, the very name full self-driving remains a point of contention, and rapid improvements could inadvertently encourage risky behavior if not messaged properly. As the system becomes 99.9% .9 reliable, the danger is that drivers may start to tune out during that final 0.1%, which is often when the most unpredictable events occur. So, after all this testing, what's the final verdict? Has FSD V14 finally conquered railroad crossings? I would say it has taken a massive, definitive step in that direction. The improvements in perception, logic and smoothness are not just noticeable, they are game-changing. The system has evolved from a hesitant, unpredictable student into a confident, methodical operator in these specific scenarios. The performance at the unguarded rural crossing was deeply impressive showing nuanced decision-making I hadn't seen before. It's clear the architectural changes under the hood have paid off. That being said, the journey to full autonomy is a marathon, not a sprint. The small wobble after the complex urban crossing is a perfect illustration. Mastering one hard task is different from integrating that skill into infinite real-world variety. Perfection is elusive. Anything less requires human oversight. So my strongest message to every Tesla driver using FSD supervised, stay alert. This tech is amazing and improving fast, but it's not a replacement for your attention. How can you stay informed and help improve it? If you're an FSD user, use it responsibly. Pay attention and be ready to take over at a moment's notice. Every intervention is a valuable data point for engineers. Share your experiences, good and bad, with the community forums, social media, video platforms, they speed up identifying systemic issues. We're living through a fascinating chapter in automotive history. We're watching a machine learn, in real time, to navigate our messy roads. FSD V14's railroad crossing performance is promising but it's one step on a long road. Embrace innovation, respect limitations, keep watching, keep testing, keep your eyes on the road. The future is coming fast, but for now, it still needs a co-pilot.